cry, walked down to the main station, went to a tunnel, then fall down and was rolled over by a train. Imagine you wanted to be a professional footballer and you trained and you trained and you were doing really well and you got opportunities. But one night you went out with your friends and you had a few drinks. And on the way home, a terrible accident occurred, which meant you could never, ever play football again. But well, that is what happened to my next guest. Everybody tells you the exact same. You need to speak this language. You need to have an A grade in this. And I was like, no, you don't need this. There's people out there that they're young like me and they have like a big company. So there must be something that I don't know. I just always I always wanted to be a professional footballer. That was just my main focus. Because since I was a child, I didn't want to have that normal life. So I was just football, 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 football. And I was quite good and was quite close to be a professional footballer. But... Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the podcast. Now, imagine this. You want to be a professional sportsman. Let's say it's a footballer. Well, that's what my next guest wanted to be. One night, he went out, he had a few drinks, and on the way home, he lost his legs in a terrible accident at a train station and ended his football career forever. That is tragic and sad enough for you to listen to. But what is incredibly inspiring is what he did afterwards, his mindset, the psychology, his approach, and how he went on to build a multi-million dollar business on the back of it. I can't wait to share this story with you. Give it up and cue the music for Yannick Rebsamen. All right, folks, let me tell you about IOPN, the Internet of People. IOPN is the next iteration of the Internet using revolutionary blockchain technology that's built on decentralized community ownership. Now, when I say decentralized community ownership, I mean it's not only controlled by a bunch of tech giants. Instead, Everyone who's part of it has a say and a stake in how things run. It gives regular people like me and you and businesses and brands an easy and fair chance to grow and make some money and build communities. IOPN is making things happen through a few key verticals. Now let's go through them. OPN Chain is a cutting edge layer one blockchain that's efficient, scalable and eco-friendly. iCognitive, a set of AI tools changing how we develop apps. Yeah, develop apps. OPNverse, a dynamic, hyper-realistic AI-powered platform that's making Web3 experiences better. Big organizations like Dubai Multi Commodities Center, Dubai World Trade Center and Ras Al Khaimah government are already seeing the potential with IOPN themselves. It's about creating a Web3 future where technology serves us, you know, us, the people, unlike what Web2 did, where we often end up serving big tech companies. Check out the Internet of People today and see how you can leverage their ecosystem. I promise you it's worth the time. Yannick, thank you so much for coming to join us on the show today. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, so... My podcast room is upstairs and uh, you decided to make your way up the stairs and gave me the opportunity to carry your um, wheelchair, which weighs less than my laptop. Exactly. <laughs> it's just six kilos, right? It's not that heavy. I didn't realize. I didn't think that's the, I mean, I mean, is this a specially made one? Is this standard? I know nothing about wheelchairs, but yes, yes. you know, I see them in the Olympics and stuff where people have these carbon fiber things. Is it, did you have that specially made? Yeah, it's ex actually specially made for me. So it's just made to be fast, right? It's like light, six kilos, full carbon. And it was actually made with the intent so I can move fast. So go in the car, uh -huh. go around and things like this. Because normal wheelchairs are like brighter, heavier, and you can't do anything with them. So this is specially made for Out of interest, how much do wheelchairs like that cost? This was exactly 6K. 6,000 euros? No, Swiss francs. Swiss francs. Yeah. 6,000 Swiss francs exactly. for a wheelchair. Yeah, exactly. I guess there's a lot of more expensive one out there. Depends what you want to do, right? But this is manual, so there's no battery behind that. So this is just 6K, right? Yeah, so for the benefit of everybody, that, so that we can help them understand your story, how many wheelchairs have you had now? One. So you had that was the first one yes. you had made? Really? Exactly. So, so you went. You were, so you went straight into flash, um, turbocharged, um, five star, five bar wheelchairs. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> in the beginning, I had just a normal one from the um, hospital, yeah. right? 
But if you just roll around, you, you're going to feel it in your arms, right? So this is really just special made on my weight, on my size, right? It's really small. It goes to every door, right? And you can just pull it up easy, right? So I just told them I want something fast so I can move fast because I knew I don't want to be stuck somewhere for like 20 minutes, right? I want to move fast, right? So that's why I told them, do it in carbon. I can clap it together. Even if I drive myself, I can just pull it off, put it next to me, and that's it. So that was actually the intent behind this. But it took like six months to get that at first. So the first six months I had this uh, normal wheelchair, which is quite heavy and it's not really comfortable. And you actually feel really disabled and retarded if you sit in one of these. But in <laughs> this one here, <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, it's true, right? And But with this one here, you feel like lightweight, you know, so you can do everything pretty awesome. fucking fast. Awesome. So let's go back to your story and start from the beginning. So you, you, you're from Switzerland, grown up in the, uh, arguably not a city, but a town of Bern. Exactly. Which you know, lots of people would love to live in Switzerland. It sounds like a very kind of like picturesque and uh, a clean and healthy and tidy place. What was your childhood like? Did you have a nice childhood? I had actually a pretty easy childhood. So it started in Bern, Switzerland. So that's the capital for the audience that doesn't know that. And where I actually lived and grew up was Walburn. So it's like a little bit outside, right? And there's like a, a mountain which is called Gurten. It is pretty much known in Switzerland and there's always a festival. And my childhood was basically like any other childhood. It wasn't really special. I went to school there. And then in Switzerland, there's something called, you can decide if you want to go to a university or you want to do a job. And besides of a job, you have school and then after three years have a diploma. I don't know if that's just in Switzerland and Germany. But after three years, I have a diploma, right? So childhood started in um, school, played football with four years old. So that was actually just my main focus. And then from there on, I was just a normal child, right? So I had fun, lived my life. And then from there on, I grew up in this town. I was traveling a lot with my parents since I was young. So I saw a lot of different parts in the world. And uh, that was quite interesting and gave me actually a lot of experience within that childhood. And um, yeah, especially just football, right? So that was my whole life, just playing football every time. Every why, why, why would somebody who's Swiss choose football? Apart from the Euros that have just happened. So yeah, I'll give yeah. you that because you kind of put your, put your flag on the map for football. Yeah, exactly. But, but traditionally, Switzerland's not a football country, is it? No, really. No. A lot of people actually like to play football, though. But I'm Brazilian, so half Brazilian. So it's in my DNA. You have to play cool. football, right? So... I started with that, just played football, right? And then I just always wanted to be a professional footballer, right? And that was just my main focus. Because since I was a child, I didn't want to have that normal life. So I was just football, 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 football. And I was quite good and was quite close to be a professional footballer. But yeah, I'm Brazilian. So it's like, you have to play football because everybody else in your family there is playing football. So that's it. But in Switzerland, there's actually a lot of people playing football. It's a big community, right? But not that big, like in, in Brazil or something. Yeah, but the, 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 the sport of Brazil is football. That's exactly nice there for you. Have Switzerland has winter sports and all the stuff that goes with that, which you, as a country, you're very good at and very successful at. So you're this kid. You, did you did you kind of stick stick out at school because you were half Brazilian? Did you kind of like get get teased, get bullied, or did you kind of like try and fit in, or did you because you were good at football? They kind of you're able to kind of swerve any of the dramas. So actually funny, I was always the cool guy like this, right? You were the cool guy. Yeah, yeah, the cool guy. I you, never. You were the bully. No, no, no. Actually, no. <laughs> actually, not. I I did bully people, but when I was alone with them, I was a nice guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I didn't bully them in front of everybody, and also when I was alone with them. But I was always like that guy. I did shit, but in front of my teacher or something, I was a nice guy. Right, and were you because of your olive skin? Were you attractive to the ladies? Yeah, I did a lot of <laughs> shit to her that back then. Yeah, yeah, I did a lot of shit. So in the beginning of my journey, like journey, I would say, so like class, I didn't do that much, right? But when I got older, yeah, yeah I did a lot. <laughs> I did a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I can say this. Yeah. So, how, so how did you progress in football? You wanted to be a professional footballer. So take take me on that journey. So obviously there's a very small number of, of kids that make it to that professional standard. And, you know, that funnel gets smaller and smaller and smaller. When you look at it, were you progressing in the direction you wanted to head in? Yeah. So from a early stage on, I was uh, playing for BSA Young Boys. So that's the 
I would say, town team, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I was playing there. I was also playing futsal. You are familiar with futsal? Yeah, futsal, yeah. Right? And uh, that gave you actually the technical um, skills to play football, I would say, way better, right? Mm -hmm. So I was always focused on this. And then I had also times where I just go back, back to school, have more focus on school and stuff like this. But then from like 14, 15 years old, it went up. I was like in um, these teams where just like you over talented, you go there, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was there, but the competition is extremely high, right? Mm -hmm. So every day is like just a fight. You have to play and it's like, it's just this, right? Your whole life is just football, right? So I went there. We were 14 years old, I was by best young boys. And then on the side, I also played futsal, right? Because it gave you this technical thing yeah. that you don't learn outside, right? Because if you're just in a room like this, you have to be extremely fast, right? You have to think fast, you have to move fast and things. And that helped me actually to progress, right? Because nobody in my team was playing this, right? Mm -hmm. But if I went, want to go back to um, Brazil, I always played this with my cousins and yeah. uncles and stuff like that. So I got used to it, right? And then from 14, 15 years old up to 16, 17, I played in these under age team, I would say, U team. It's youth called. teams, yeah. Uh, youth teams, exactly. Went to big tournaments, et cetera. And I was actually sure, just in my mind, I was going to be a professional footballer, right? But you never know. But really, one game can happen and then you break something and then you're out, right? Or you don't play good for a week, you don't play, right? Then with 18, I had the trial. No, with 17, I had the trial at Manchester City for a month and I was there and I thought that I'm going to be here, I'm going to live here, etc. Then after this month, we had this trial there, but you know how England is, it's just like shitty weather and <laughs> it's just raining, right? Like I was in February there, so it was and cold it, as fuck, right? And then I realized, okay, now I know why youth players don't go out to another country in this age, right? So I was like, okay, fuck it. I go back, right? I went back, played for a few years and then <clears throat> till like, 20 years old I played and then I had like this thought in myself, okay, if I would be that big of a talent, I would be professional football already, right? Because in Brazil, it's like, it's easy to get like professional with 16, 17, 18. And if you get to that stage, then you know, okay, something big is going to happen if yeah. nothing happens to you. Right? Yeah. So my focus shifted more to work. So just to achieve something. But obviously in this age, I didn't knew what I'm going to do, right? I was just like- So what were you doing? Um, I was having, I don't know how it's called in English, but it's Just describe it. It's like Ausbildung in German. So it's like you work, you have school, and then after three years, you have a diploma. Apprenticeship. Yeah, apprenticeship, exactly. Yeah, apprenticeship. At Mercedes as a seller. Okay. So a part- uh, Selling cars. No, 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 no. That's the next part. So you were selling, um, how do you say this? Parts. Parts, car parts first. Car parts, yeah. And then the next one is- uh, and another diploma, and then you can sell cars. So it's not like directly, right? I can. And my first goal was basically to be the CEO of that branch, right? But then with like 17 or 18, I started to go into what can we do to make money, right? Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of other things online, which I don't go into that, but I started with doing like network marketing, trading, crypto back then, right? Didn't all work. The reason being it didn't work because I don't like to have no control over what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I started to go in there trying to figure out my stuff, right? But still working on this because you have to. And my, my parents, especially my father was saying, okay, you have to finish this, otherwise you won't do anything, right? So I had to finish this, right? And then after this, I started um, working as a car seller at Mercedes, right? It was an easy, pretty good life, but I wanted more. So like, okay, I want to go up. In Switzerland, you have always this, if you're young and you speak, for example, with a person like you who was way older than me, they don't take Flights. you seriously. <laughs> yeah, sorry, but let's say this, <laughs> right? Let's say, no, no, you don't have to be her, but let's say this, right? They sit there, you're like 19 or something trying to sell a car, right? And they sit there and say, okay, what do you want to say, right? So yeah. You're just 19, right? Yeah. And I always hated that in my mind, right? And there was like a lot of people in our company, they were like just you just look at them so like why are you there and me not right because you're not smarter than me you're not better than me i can be there right but in switzerland you need the diploma you need to study you need this 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 and this right and then also in switzerland that's like common especially for the swiss audience that's watching is they hate the word by the mean b like having contacts and go up the ladder right and i remember they always told me 
yeah, some other guys have vitamin B and that's why they're up the ladder. And I always knew in my mind, that's the way. You call, what go. did you call it? Vitamin B? Yeah, vitamin B, they say it in Switzerland. Like, okay, you have a contact who brings you there where you want. Ah, I'll go on the route of the deep Shortcuts. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. For me, it's always like a shortcut. I always look for shortcuts, okay. right? And But to, in order to go to a stage of a CEO, you have to go through years of years of studying and stuff like that. Ladder. Yeah, it's like stupid, right? In my mind. Me too. But you're just in the corporate world, basically in the matrix, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sitting there and everybody tells you the exact same. You need to speak this language. You need to be have like an A grade in this, um, or like a, mass, a mathematics or whatever, you know? And I was like, no, you don't need this, right? There's people out there that they are young like me and they have like a big company, right? So there's, there's so, there must be something that I don't know, right? So I started doing my own thing, etc. But still working on the side of Mercedes, but always with that thought, I'm not going to be here forever, mm -hmm. right? So I started to go out, trying to figure out other stuff. And then also to the point where I'm doing actually right now is e-commerce. But at this time, I didn't really knew what e-commerce is. I just knew, okay, you have a website and you sell stuff online, right? But I didn't know how to set up everything, right? So I started a little bit, but the thing was, I was the only one around my friends who wanted to do something, right? A lot of people want to do things, but they don't want it enough. You know, you know what I mean? They're like, don't, okay, don't let's take do the it. action. Exactly. They're okay, let's do it. But as soon as your girlfriend calls you, ah, now I can't. My girlfriend is telling me, yeah, then then don't, this, this stay there, right? So I started doing that myself. Besides of working there, but always with the with the mindset, okay, I'm not gonna be here. I have to find something that gets me out here because there's something that I don't know, right? So that was always that searching, right? So I did this till 20, 20, yeah, 23. I was a car seller. And then my life was pretty okay. Pretty normal life, had a good job, was making good money as a seller and still playing football, but not anymore that high. I could be become professional if I wanted to, right? And I was actually close to be like literally a week before to get a professional contract at the other, um, how do you say it? A football club, yeah. right? And uh, then I had an accident, right? So December 24th, 2018, I was in Zurich at the party to be exact at Mascot. That's a big club in Zurich. And I was like every weekend there. And I was drinking a lot, like always, like every weekend. And then I was too drunk, like many times, right? So like many young men. Exactly. So what happened from there is we went to the main station and that was the last thing that I actually remember. And then I saw from videos that I walked down to, to the main station, went to a tunnel and then fall down and was rolled over by a train. So let me make sure I get this right. You've gone out, gone for some drinks with some friends. It's Christmas Eve. You've gone using public transport the way you would normally. You've fallen drunk and a train has rolled over your legs. Exactly. And you lost both your legs. Exactly. In that moment. Exactly. How old were you exactly? 23. Exactly a month after my birthday. I'm just trying to think about my, when I was 23. So, I've been drunk and lost my memory and woke up the next day and people say to me, my goodness, last night you were funny because or you were bad because. And I'm like, really? Do you remember talking to that man, that woman? And I'm like, no. So I can understand the kind of like getting drunk and not remembering. <clears throat> What's your first actual, apart from watching the video, because that's our, what's your first actual memory? Waking up in the hospital. Yeah. And then it's actually, it was actually like a movie. So you are in your bed and you wake up like, it's exactly like a movie. You wake up, you close your eyes again, you wake up, you see your parents in front of you, your best friends, my parents on the right side and they were all crying. Right. And I looked at myself, my hand was swollen. Everything was swollen, right? And I asked- Kind of bruised and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know what happened, right? So like, so what happened, right? And they're like, yeah, you survived the train accident. 
And I was like, no, uh, okay, but I'm here, right? So I looked at myself, t took a mirror, I was like, everything was swollen on my face, right? And I was like, crazy. So now, right? And then they said like in a, like it's nothing they told me this, like, hey, by the way, you lost your legs. And I, and I looked at them, that was funny. That was really, literally funny. I looked at them, I was like, no. I, with this thing, I was laughing. No, can't be true because I feel my legs, right? And they were like, no, 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 you lost your legs. Took the bed away. And then I saw it, right? And then like, literally I, I sat down there, was sitting there, I was like, crazy. I lost my legs, right? So like the, the whole world found. Were you like an out, outside looking in? Yeah. If it was a surreal scenario and it wasn't real for you. It was surreal. It was extremely surreal. And like, especially if you play to your whole life football and you were always around, right? And then you see this, you just don't have any legs anymore. Did, did, did the train cleanly across the two, the wheels go straight over and so it was a clean slice across both legs? Exactly. Like directly. Above the knee? Above the knee. Above the knee. So that... They were, they, they, it's not like it was like they, they were pulled apart. It was immediately they, they were taken, yes. they were removed. Yes, yes. So you wake up in hospital. I mean, and I, you know, as you tell me this, it's like I, 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 I would get that. You wake up after something like that and you're like, what's, what's the fuss? What's all going around? And then someone says something that sounds so bizarre to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, what, what do you mean? You've, yeah, the point is you feel your legs, right? If you don't know it, you you still feel it because you have that like this whole picture. Yeah, you have feet. the whole kind of like muscle memory thing, yeah, that exactly. kind of stuff as well. In your exactly. mental picture, you've never known yourself without legs. You've exactly. Been a, how long were you in hospital for before you woke up? Was it a couple of days or? No, a few hours, actually. A few hours. So you've gone from the, the accident to the hospital. Yes. Okay. And a few hours later, you've woken up. Yeah, like eight hours later, I woke up. The, my, the, the police was like this. They went home to my parents like early in the morning and then told them, hey, listen, you boy got rolled over by a train and he lost both legs, right? And it could be that he's not going to wake up for the next few months, but I woke up like immediately, right? And uh, they told me this and I was like, now what, right? So, so t tell me about that bit. So you're in hospital, you've got this kind of like, this is a bit weird. You're not, you're not believing it yet. How long did it take before it kind of started to sink in and you started to realize what was happening in re real time? About a week, I would say. A week? Yeah, because after, after they told me I lost my legs, then they told me the second bad news, which is, I wouldn't say bad news. It was basically, they told me, you died 20 minutes. You will dead, completely dead. And um, I'm going to also tell them the audience what experience I had by being dead and what I learned from this, right? Okay, let's do that again. Not the audience, me. I'm okay. talking to me, yeah. That they can work that out. All right, perfect. Yeah. So just so yeah, you, just tell me about you were dead, the other thing, the other thing that I didn't know. Which one? That you were dead. Oh, they told me you were 20 minutes dead. And when? when dead? It, yeah, dead. When they told me this, this took me even, it like, it took me more than just losing my legs. Losing my legs was like, okay, I lost it, but it's okay. I'm still here, but I was dead, right? So when they told me this, I was like completely in shock. Asked my friends, hey, wh wh what happened, right? So do you, do you know something? You know? And they told me, hey, we didn't know anything. You were in Zurich with someone else who was not with you at the accident time. And then I was a week in Zurich in hospital. And then we literally after a week, I realized, okay, my legs are not coming back again. So I started to realize, okay, that's your new life, right? It took literally one week, not more, before I started to, okay, I'm here, right? Be grateful for that. Where did, did you go and stay with your parents? Where? Did you go and stay with your parents after, the, after you came from hospital? No, I was, I was bringing back to Bern to the hospital and I was there tr three weeks. And then after these three weeks, I went six months to, to the Riga in Zurich. Okay. So I was like, in, in, in the time when I was in the hospital, I wasn't going home. But then when the Riga started, I could go home like once a week. How, how, 
I mean, you, you're sitting with me as a positive, optimistic, cheerful kind of guy, is the truth. Kind of very matter of fact about things. But I just want to kind of dive into how these things must feel for somebody. Because you see, you do see people that have been through you know, tragic experiences that eventually do come out the other side and, and start to find purpose and mission in their life and to give themselves hope and faith. But sometimes you see people that go through this really extended journey of trying to discover who they are and because they've realized they've lost all of the things that were always taken for granted, you know, and, and legs are a great example of that, aren't they? Yeah. I had legs. I no one, no, no. it's not like, woohoo, I've got legs. It was like, <laughs> I, I just have legs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might mean that now, but you know, but back then it was, well, I've got legs. It's, it's, it's just normal. Mm -hmm. How, so in the, in the period of time after you left the first hospital, you went to the second hospital. Mm -hmm. How were you feeling? What was your, where was your head at? You've got this realization, but how did it make you think? You couldn't play football anymore. You couldn't, you know, there's lots of things I'm sure you couldn't do that you would just normally do. Yeah, of course. So wh where was your head? So first of all, with the simple stuff. So how, how do you get even in a car? How do you go to the toilet? Like these simple things, right? Yeah. And the thing is, my parents live in an old house, so there's a lot of steps. And my room was, the, was yeah. yeah, like 30 steps to go up. Like things like this. How do you go from A to B, right? Because how do you make a coffee in the kitchen? Yeah, exactly. So how do you cook now? How do you go the st stairs up? How do you come even to the house, right? How do you go to the toilet? How do you enter a car? All these little things, right? But then after... Like I said, the week, I started to realize, okay, you should be actually grateful that you're still here. Because they told me like a lot of times, hey, you're damn lucky that you survived. You shouldn't be actually here. And you shouldn't be, in fact, you shouldn't be actually able to talk normal. They told, they told me this like literally clearly. How do you think about it? You got lost two legs. You had two, two arteries have been cut. Yep. So you'd have lost a huge amount of blood. Yep. Okay. And then you'd have had no oxygen going to your brain for an mm -hmm. extended period of time. So arguably, okay, there should be some brain damage. Exactly. At least, yeah? Exactly. After seven minutes, you've got brain it's damage. Something, yeah. Something, something like that. It's very short yes. before it happens. And you've gone through, <laughs> through these two extreme experiences. Did you start to get, yeah, you, said, you said you were grateful that you were still alive. And that's quite an interesting thing to think about. But did, did the, kind of like the, the stress and the frustration of everyday life, simple stuff, like you say, did that start to wear you down? Did that neg you out? Did that make you frustrated or annoyed? No, no, absolutely not. Because the first thing what I did, one of the first thing what I did was basically I was Googling other people who lost like legs or, yeah, yeah. or whatever. And I found two people. One of them is like a black guy in America. And one of them is... The famous, I, I don't know the name, but look, like some Serbian guy who lost like both arms, legs and stuff like this. And is also now a motivational speaker. So I, I looked at them, but the main difference with, with them was they didn't lose anything. They were born like this. Okay. They were born like this. They know, they know no different. Yeah, exactly. I know exactly the difference till to this day, how to walk, right? Or how to sprint. That's a big difference. So I looked at them and I was like, okay, they achieved something, but they're not better than you, right? And then I looked around me, I was like, wow, you're still here. You can still talk. You can still normally think, so be grateful for this. And what I learned when I was dead, because most people ask me, hey, did you saw like a light or God or something? I didn't saw anything besides of myself. And I was, it, it was a dream, basically. It's like that near-death experience you have once you die. Do you know the amount of people on this planet that wants to know. Yeah. 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 Everybody asks me about Everyone wants to know yeah. what's it like on the other side. Yeah, I'm going to tell you exactly what, what it is. Okay. And it was the big discovery that I made is basically when you have that, that's just my experience, right? That near death experience. Then I was walking around, around me. I saw the whole scene or what was happening, right? The whole scene. And I remember in my dreams because I had that near-death experience dream like four months straight, every evening, right? And you were walking around and these people were screaming, hey, we have to get him back, get blood back, etc." And they were like pulling you on the, uh, on the chest, right? So you get back. And I told myself, it's not time to go. You have to do something. And then I ended.
It's always like this. It, it ended like this, right? What I, but what I realized then after like a month is if you can control if you want to die or not, what else can you control? Which means you can control your whole life. So it starts in your mind, right? That's what I realized. And that gave me power. That's such a powerful thing to say. Yeah, that, that you gave can, me... Can, you can, let's just repeat this because this is really powerful. You, if you can control whether you live or die, you can control everything else in your life. So, and you're there looking at your dead body in yeah. a dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're looking down at yourself and you're exactly. saying, we ain't going today. Exactly, exactly. Oh, wow. That was, that, was, that, that was just a dream that I had for four months and then it ended. Like I never had it again. And then I actually also knew I'm healed in my, in my mind. Right? Yeah, yeah. So now I just have to be healed with, phys with my physical body, right? Mm. But then I knew I'm, I'm done. I made it, right? But that made me realize you can control everything. You, you are in control of, of absolutely everything. What's do, in do, your do you think that that created a superpower for you? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I started laughing again. I started like, before that, I had like knee problems because of football. So I started laughing. So I don't have these knee problems anymore. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, or, or if you go out the door, right, and you clip your foot, you can foot out, I don't have these problems anymore. <laughs> I started laughing, right? And I started actually giving energy to my parents because I was like, look, I'm here. You don't have to cry. And they were like exactly the same like me, right? And then a week, week, week and a half after this, I started with my business e-commerce, which I still... You started that a week and a half after you said, really? Exactly, because my thought was, I was like, I have roughly six to seven months until I have to go back to do something, right? Because I was here. I was not like retarded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I can easily do an office job or something. So I was like, I have six, seven months to do something. What's the best way to make money? And in the beginning, it was just, I don't want to work anymore, right? And I started with e-commerce and I remember... It's like, it's like a funny scene. You're in your bed, you have painkillers, right? And you're there and you start to do like a website and then you do some Facebook ads, marketing, and then ka -ching, it makes the first sale, right? It wasn't huge. It was like eight bucks, but it gave me that confirmation. Oh, wow, it works. It fucking works, right? <laughs> and I remember that the nurse came in and she's like, that's not going to work. And I was so on the painkillers, I start, start shouting at her. So shut the fuck up. It's going to work, right? <laughs> You don't have to kill my dream now, right? <laughs> Please not, right? So I started from there doing this the whole six months when I was in the hospital, right? And it gave me so power because I just realized, oh, wow, if I can do this, I can do everything, right? And that's my mindset that I have. So, yeah, I literally started one, one and a half weeks. He, it's, it's almost like you, there's, there's this guy with this kind of positive, upbeat personality. He's gone through tragic tragic experience but it's it's made you happier but it's actually made you bulletproof yep which i find really fascinating it's like the the the, the, the strength of your mind now it's like it's impenetrable yeah you can't be broken no it's bulletproof i can't be broken it's just incredible to be and 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 if you know, they say when people go blind, their ears become better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say when they come deaf, their eyes become better and so on, yeah? And it's almost like something's been taken away from you, but the ultimate superpower that you could have been given, you actually got to the top of the list to get the ultimate superpower. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's nuts. Exactly. Because if you can't break you... You win, right? And whatever you want. It, it, it reminds me a little bit of David Coggins. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly that mindset. I like this guy. Callous your mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Because it's just you versus you, right? Yeah. It's like, it's going to hurt. So deal with it. Yeah, exactly. That, that That's what most people brings down because there's a little voice in there. Oh, I don't feel bad and blah. I just I just climbed Mont Blanc. Yeah, two weeks ago, yeah? I saw it. In your and so climbing Mont Blanc, there, there were times when I was up there the other day and I didn't want to be there. I, I really didn't want to be there. And one of the ladies I was climbing with, one hour from the summit, she said, yeah, that's enough, I'm done. 
And I looked at her and I was like, what? He said, I'm done. We just call it. It's, it, we did, it. We did good. We did good. I'm like, I said to the guide, how far is it? He said, it's an hour. And I'm like, is it really an hour or is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it yeah, yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two hours, an hour. three hours. Is it an hour? <laughs> he said, it, it might be less. And I just said to her, just do me a favor. And because the snow was deep, I'm like, just step in my footsteps. Just, we were all roped together. Just step in my footsteps. Stay with me. Let's just give it another five minutes and see how we go. And then I said to her, count to 100 and, and then count to 100 again with every step. And just tried to give ways to, to help her not focus on the challenge at hand, but focus on something else so that she could carry on executing exactly. and get to the summit. But, it, you know, people say to me, oh, you did so well doing it. It's really hard. But lots of people stumble at the smallest of hurdles. You know, and, 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 you know I don't know. For every one person that's made money in business, or oh, drop shipping, every one person that's made money in drop shipping, there's a hundred that haven't. Exactly. Not that the hundred couldn't, they just haven't mm -hmm. because they decided to not. Exactly. Rather than to. Have you ever been depressed? No, this doesn't exist. I, I don't believe in this. <laughs> Tell me, tell me about that. It's, it's hard. It does, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> tell, tell me what. Tell me for me, for me, it's completely bullshit because it's uh, essentially you versus you, right? And um, it, it acts, in my description, it's basically a state of mind that should motivate you to get a life that's not depressing any further anymore. Right? So it should actually motivate you to do something or not to sit down, oh, I don't feel this. Yeah, you you will feel thing, but the beautiful thing is you can channel this in something, right? I the the situation that was what I was in was depressing, so I changed something, right? To have now a life I can do whatever I want. That's what I wanted, right? So for me, it's just you against you, right? Your voice within you will tell you, oh don't do it. You don't feel that oh let's do it not. But you have to then stand up, stand up and say, no, we just do it, right? Because that's like, it's, it's like yin and yang. There's no light without dark. Oh, sorry. It's yin, stop banging because the mic's pick it up. Sorry, so that's like yin and yang. There's no light without dark, right? Yeah. So if you go through bad times, there's always good times. Always, right? So if you like depressed or something, then you just have to know if you go through this, there's a light, which everything is beautiful, right? And life is a fight. So you're not going to be endlessly happy. That doesn't, that doesn't work, right? So I think it's just a state of mind that should motivate you to do something, right? And if you can't stand up, then you're going to lose, right? It's that simple. When, 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 when you have this type of conversation with somebody else. They believe they, me this. Huh? They believe me this. If I tell them that's not true, they believe me this. And sometimes you can actually just look at people, right? And it's funny, you can just look at them and then you can make a conclusion about their life. So, for example, they're fat, right? So you... What, me? No, no, you're not fat. But let's say <laughs> you're not fat. You got me old earlier. I just need a compliment. No, all good, all good, all good. <laughs> all good, all good. All good. When, when, when you see people that, are, that, that aren't winning, okay, and, and have kind of adopted that I'm a victim mindset, when you see that, does that frustrate you does it sadden you does it inspire you to want to try and you know tee people up in some way what, what does it make you feel in the beginning i tried to help everybody oh right yes especially friends early business partners but then i realized with time it doesn't help them it doesn't if they don't have the will to do it themselves they will never ever do it so i stopped doing this and I stopped, I actually, I'm actually being way harder than I was before. So like if, let's say going back to that example, if you're fat, I tell you you're fat because shame will probably help you to do something. But if I come to you, let's go to the gym, let's go to the gym together and I have to drag you all the fucking time, it doesn't help. So I stopped doing this, right? And I tell people, listen, if you really want to do it, you're going to do it, right? It's like, for example, as I tell you, lay off on these red hot stones, for example, and you try to do it, you get up and move because it's like so, so uncomfortable, right? 
But the fact you don't do anything in your life shows you're pretty comfortable where you're at, mm -hmm. right? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that's how I see a people, right? Because a lot of people come to me, I don't have this, I'm, I don't have a motivation. If it's really that uncomfortable, like being a child somewhere in Africa and don't have uh, water, you're going to do something. And the pressure is going to force you to do something. You're going to find solutions. But if you don't want to do it, I can't help you. Mm -hmm. I can be the most motivated guy on the whole fucking world. But if you don't want to do it, I can help you. So I stopped doing this. If you want to do it, I'm always happy to help you. But if not, like simple things, going to the gym, mm -hmm. right? And you don't have the motivation to do it. I say, stay down there. I don't care. Like literally, I don't care. And nobody else also doesn't care. Mm -hmm. So, but you have to care about yourself. Talk to me about your business success. You've gone on to become a multimillionaire, being a drop shipper or e-commerce and certain terms you want to use that are different. Not drop, use e-commerce, not drop yeah, shipping. Yeah, e-commerce. Yeah? Don't want to say drop shipping. Um, I, I, and this, this kind of line keeps popping up in my head. It's like the multimillionaire from his wheelchair. <laughs> it's a perfect term, right? He got it right. That's a perfect term, right? <laughs> multimillionaire is a wheelchair, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go and buy the domain for that and keep that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll send I it. might get the golden wheelchair soon. <laughs> <laughs> the, the multi like a diamond. <laughs> the, oh, they have diamond watches, <laughs> right? I get the diamond wheelchair. You want the diamonds in the middle of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the multimillionaire in the diamond wheelchair. Well, do you think it, let's, let's remove the, your tragic incident that's happened in your life and the challenges. Let's just be business people for a minute, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you believe everybody can become a millionaire if they want to? No. Okay. To be honest. What do you believe? Because it's the same thing I went through my accident because there's you know it yourself, you're a businessman, there's ups and downs and sometimes like hard ups and downs. Like you lose money, you go broke again, what happened to me twice, right? And I think it's just a mental game, right? So I see business as also life as a game, right? And you have to play that well and you're gonna level up in business at a certain time. In the beginning, I was alone. Just did everything on my laptop, like used just public things and now I'm deep in one phone call, I have it, right? So most people want it, but they don't want it bad enough, right? But if you, with your back against the wall and you need to have a solution, then you're going to find it, right? And then from there on, your success comes. So, and I also believe if you make a lot of money, some people or most people are not ready to have a lot of money. Because with a lot of money, there comes a lot of responsibilities mm -hmm. and the number increases. You're also going to lose a few hundred K or a few million, which happened also in my, my um, situation, right? So I don't think everybody can be successful. It de also depends what they are defining as success. For example, someone is success just 10K a month, right? Mm -hmm. For others, one is just a million a day, right? Mm -hmm. So it really depends what you want, right? It's funny how you measured it in money. Yes, money, it's also the stress level increases. In my you, case, you measured it in money. I thought that was interesting because success isn't, own, the, the only metric for success isn't financial. There's other metrics for success. It is. And wh where, where do you categorize happiness? Happiness. In, 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 in success. being successful. Yeah. I feel happy when I progress. That's when I feel happy. When I feel like I do something and I get to my goal or I just do every day the tasks that I have to do. But isn't, isn't the person that's earning 50,000 euros a year, doing the job of his dreams, getting up every day, happy and on fire, you know, really glad and grateful that he has the life he has. Is, isn't that success? That's success. So like I said, it really depends how we define success yeah right so if you just want to be crazy and have as much money and as much as possible then it's, that's something different right so it really you cannot just in my eyes you cannot just define that look this is happiness and this is success it really depends on you mm -hmm. right before i know people they're happy with their 5k a month mm -hmm. that's good as long as you're happy perfectly fine right but there's people they start shaking if they don't have like seven figures on the bank right so when i when i was how old are you 
Uh, 28. Okay. So when I was your, oh, that's interesting. Okay. So when I was 26, I made my first million. Yep. When I was 28, I had my first million in the bank, in my checking account. So this was a, a long time ago for me, because I'm 54 now. <laughs> so this is, so, so if we inflation relates it, it's probably 2 million. But, oh, I don't know. Yeah. That was 1998. Um, okay. Okay. So that's interesting. So I was attached to all of the material things that success forces you into. Yeah. You know, the, the Ferraris, the expensive watches, the expensive holidays, the, the, the expensive clothes, all of, all of that stuff. And I thought it was important and valuable. And as I got older, I still probably up to the age of 45 valued those things. But when I got to 45, I started to look at the world slightly differently. And I started to look at what would make me really happy. And I found that what made me really happy was helping others. And so I started to help these children from Bangladesh um, that were trafficked. And the sense of joy I got out of that gave me a real renewed sense of purpose and mission. Mm -hmm. Now, many people have said to me, but you've made your money. So you could. And I, and I respect that. But what, what I learned is that I wasn't sure whether I was really, really happy when I was making all the money. I really loved the game. I really loved winning. But that, that was the bit that was probably where the joy was. The, the money side of things, I don't think was the... I understand you. Does that make sense? Yes, I completely understand you. I had that thought like last week. So like, okay, it's funny, but it's not like... See, you talked about making money and being successful. For me... I'm, if, if I'm using money as my measurement of success, then I'm now, I'm now competing with people that have the most money. Yeah, exactly. That's Elon Musk, that's Putin. Yeah, that's a little like, bit hard so, to get past. Yeah, no, but then, <laughs> that, 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 that's the benchmark. Exactly. You know, that's exactly. the number one. And it's like, you know, like, uh, who, who am I aiming for? Who am I competing with? I'm exactly. competing with myself, but I need a North Star. Yeah. You know, and will I, so if I never reach my North Star, I mean, if you, have you been to Monaco? No, never. Okay, have you been to Monaco? So when you go to Monaco, I don't care how much money you've got, you'll never be the richest man in Monaco. And it's that, that, that feeling when you're there, okay? Yeah. No matter how much money you've got in Monaco, you're not, you're not the richest person there. Exactly. And so I think often about this thing about going out there. I think everyone should create financial security for themselves. I don't believe anybody should live on a salary because I think a salary is a prison sentence. It is. Yeah. Okay. It literally locks you in to live your whole life around this fixed amount of money every month. Uh, so I, I don't believe that. But I believe, okay, that most things that people need to learn to get to where they want to go are actually skills. Now, whether they're practical skills, whether they're e-commerce skills, or whether they're mindset skills, or whether they're sales skills, they're just skills. Mm -hmm. And if you break everything down into boxes and say, these are skills, I need to learn the skills so that I can execute efficiently, I think it changes the way that people deal with situations. Mm -hmm. So I believe I can take a six foot gorilla and I can teach them to learn how to make a million dollars a year. I believe that because yeah. I don't believe it's actually hard. Yeah. I think it's only hard for people that don't know how to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Or don't understand the formula. You know, yeah. When you make a million a year, you, it's like you can't unlearn it. Exactly. It's like riding a bike. Yeah? Exactly. It's, it's, exactly. You just can't unlearn it. Yeah. It's now... And if you do less than one million, you failed because you, 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 seem, you, you know subconsciously and automatically how to do that. Yeah. So it's a case of getting people to keep bit by bit getting better so that they can't unlearn. So whether it's, a, in this example, a 10 grand month, yeah. uh, well, now, now you can't earn less than 10 because yeah. you, you, you know how to do 10. So it's like the 10 to 11 to 12 and so on. For them to create that financial security, I think is really important. But what I think the most important thing for people to do when they start to make money is, is to, first of all, remember they're extremely lucky to be in that position. Mm -hmm. Okay. But number two, I believe anybody that makes the kind of money that you make and I make and whatnot, it should be law, law that we sacrifice or give or invest one or two days per month into helping people less fortunate than ourselves. I agree. And I think that will stop a lot of people that thought money was the North Star from becoming depressed over what they've achieved. And it will install a huge amount of gratitude in us. Mm -hmm. When 
when you turned up at my house in your wheelchair. Okay, you and I have chatted on, on, online and whatnot, but we haven't met face to face. Today we did. You turn up in your wheelchair. Okay, you come through the front door and look at you, handsome, fit, strong, tattoos, all that kind of stuff. You're looking, you know, well manicured. There was still a part of me that felt bad for you. Yeah. That's, yeah? That's more... Just in that moment when we shook hands, he came in, you came in, we shook hands. As we shook, in that moment, I, I felt a little bit of pain for you. You don't think it at all because you're blooming, you, 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 you're impenetrable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I felt a bit of pain for you and I just, um, I want to acknowledge that, but I think that when we feel pain for others, I think it makes us stop and think a little bit about ourselves. Yeah. Because I felt a bit of pain for you then and then I walked to the stairs and I reminded myself I had legs just mm. for those five seconds. And, how and, and it was it was you ex putting a mirror up to me really that enabled me to do that. Does that make sense? Yes. Definitely. When, when is enough? What is enough? In terms of what? In terms of you and what your, what your, what your trajectory is. Are you, are you trying to go somewhere? Or <clears throat> do you use words like more, better, harder? Like words that have no real kind of no. substance. I try to be the best version of myself. That's my goal. Does that mean you try and beat yourself every day? I was just trying to be every day a little bit better in yeah. every every aspect, like gym, mindset, knowledge. Okay, but that's that's a real cliche thing to say yeah. unless you do measure it. Yeah. Exactly. So I say I, I talk about the one percent, you know, and it's is it a little bit more weight? Is it a little bit more reps? Is it a little bit more? What, what is it? What is it that we measure to to demonstrate to ourselves we're a little bit better? So what is it you measure? Do you measure the kind of like the result, as in the the money, or the uh, or do you do you measure the input? I measure more what I was last year, for example. Uh -huh. Like before, like say every year, I measure myself where do I was. For example, last year, last year I had like a big setback, a lot of money got blocked, and I had to go back to my parents, and I was like literally again at zero, right? Last year, yeah, two million got blocked. How did you? How did you feel? Yeah. I felt like, like, it's funny. So like, oh my God, back. And then I talked to a lot of people that I know who have a lot of money and I explained to them and they're like, don't worry, I lost more than you, right? And then, yeah, I realized again, oh, wow, that's, that's a part of the process. It's like, you go up, you fall down. You go up, you fall down. You go up and fall down. It's, it's the, this process. So that gave me actually motivation, right? And it took me like half a year to pay everything back because I had a huge bill from American Express. But luckily, I was a long-term client there. I spent a lot of money and I'm really grateful for them that they said, okay, yeah, you can pay it back monthly. And I did. But I knew in my mindset that when I go through this, everything comes again, right? And it did. It did. Like, I'm living with my boys together in a big mansion. We're going every day to the gym and your life is good. So, like, compared to last year, I'm better, right? Even with things like mindset, getting more knowledge, being smarter, getting a better network, looking more for your parents and stuff like this, that's how I measure. So where I was last year, last year was completely fucking bad for me, to be honest, right? But it should show me, okay, that's a process and this will happen again. So what you learn from then, try to, for example, what I have now is 50 bank accounts. So this don't happen again, blocking money, <laughs> right? So I learned from it, right? I just, uh, I would say everybody, hey, just do it if you're like trying to move yeah. a lot of money around. But I learned from it, right? So more conscious about things, right? Especially if you travel around trying to do business with other people, like literally just listen to yourself and like really be conscious about what's going on around you, right? So I measure myself in years. So where I was it last year, how was it then? How many mistakes I did, right? Did I saw things that before? happen before they actually happen, right? Being more conscious, listen to your gut feeling. That's what I do a lot. Trust your gut, yeah. Exi exactly. I saw it a lot of times happen uh, in the past, especially with friends that, that I said something and then it actually happened. Or I had like this feeling, uh, I don't know, and then it was really bad. So I'm really, really conscious about this. If something is wrong in my mind, I'm not going to do it. You can present me the best deal or whatever you want to present to me, I'm not going to do it because your gut feeling mostly knows what's going to happen. So I measure this. I measure the people around me. Is 
my life just with happy people, which it is. So everybody around me is not like depressed or mm -hmm. complaints, mm -hmm. right? Like um, three years ago, so for two years ago back, I moved out from Dubai, uh, from Switzerland to Dubai. And before this, I had big apartment, several cars, a girlfriend, but not good friends around me. They were all like... Klingons. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. They are good people, right? They are good people, but not for what I wanted, mm -hmm. right? So I kicked everyone out and I measured that again. I was like, who is around me now? Are they supporting you? Are they good people, right? Are they like in any kind like unhappy and things like this? No. So it's way better since then, right? So I measured this like this. Every person measures it differently, but I always look back in a year. Okay, where do you work? Let's, let's, let's give people some advice here. I want you to give some tips. Right, All right. let's do it. When, what are the three most important things that you think people need? The ingredients they need to become successful. First, getting an unbreakable mind. Because the unbreakable mind. Exactly. Because the game of life is going to be different the older and the older you get. So you need to be prepared in your mind because bad things are going to happen and you need to be prepared. Same thing like business, same thing in the relationship. Things are going to happen. It's like 100% sure something's going to happen and you need to stand up for this and go through this. Like I said, the uh, um, thing before, like yin and yang, right? Mm -hmm. Light, dark and light, right? So these things are going to happen. Okay. That's first. The second is get as much knowledge as you can. So learn every day, being smarter. The more you know, the better in any situation. So if you just know, especially about you, like get yourself to know. That's really important. Get to know yourself, yeah. Extremely. Uh -huh. If you know, the more you know about yourself, the better. And the, the better you're going to do in any environment. It doesn't matter if you're like in the Sahara, on a sinking ship or whatever. You're going to do better if you know yourself really good. Third, get really good people around you. And that can be hard because sometimes you don't want to change your environment because you're comfortable. It's cause, it's cause, so if you're not happy with the environment you have, it's hard to say, but kick them out and make a life or construct the life you want. And by how to do that is basically when you get better. All of these points combined. Having those all together at the... The three of the most important ingredients, who you spend your time with, okay, will influence your brain in ways you couldn't possibly imagine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think about you and I think if I spent a lot of time with you, with the kind of energy that you have and the positivity and the optimism and, and the fact that you, 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 you clearly are a born optimist to me. You're just mm -hmm. like, you're a can-do kind of guy, yeah? Um, spending, spending a lot of time around you, I'm sure the people that are close to you get to see that yeah. and, and get to enjoy that and benefit from it. Yeah, you're one hell of a guy. Yeah, like, thank you so much for coming to share your story on the show today. It's been great getting to know you, mate. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. It was great.